Dear lady and gentlemen, as the chairman of International Chamber of Commerce of Ukraine, the most powerful organization facilitating business conduct in Ukraine and establishing public-private dialogue. As an advisor of Prime Minister of Ukraine, I would like to welcome all participants with the opening of Norwegian-Ukraine Business Forum. This business forum has to become a solid platform for a better so disclosure of the potential of Ukraine-Norwegian business ties. Now, I would like to give the floor, my friends, President Norwegian Ukraine Chamber of Commerce, Arni Mios. Thank you. Prime Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, uh, on behalf of the Norwegian Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce, it, I also would like to welcome you to this uh, Norwegian Ukrainian Business Forum. A special welcome to the two Prime Ministers, uh, Mr. Jatsunuk and Mrs. Uh, Solberg. Their participation in this event is a great inspiration for everyone and is highly appreciated. Norwegian Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce is a non-governmental, non-profit member organization. The Chamber has today 60 members and is growing. Our aims are to facilitate increased commercial activities between our two countries and to offer an arena for exchange of experiences and facts for businesses and organizations established in bilateral cooperation and trade. We think there is a huge potential in bilateral cooperation. The total trade volume has for the last years been around uh, 3 billion Norwegian krone, approximately four, 400 million euro, most likely substantially less this year. Our vision is that it should uh, increase by 10 times in the 2020 perspective. Uh, the Business Forum is an important tool to show this potential and we think the overwhelming interest uh, is a very good indication. The, in the parallel session we have chosen sectors we think are most promising, energy, trade, ICT and competence. Included in the Business Forum 2014 are also the activities of Seed Forum. We intend to organize a new forum in the one and a half, two years in Norway. We have to thank the Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs for making this conference possible by their financial support. I would also like to thank our Ukrainian partner, International Chamber of Commerce, Ukraine, and the Norwegian Embassy in Kyiv for good and constructive cooperation. In addition, I would like to thank our private sponsor for the contribution, the Norwegian Seafood Council, for the reception tonight, every and info foods for contributing in practical organizing for this conference, and the Ukraine mobile operator Keystar and their main Norwegian shareholders uh, for their contribution. I wish you all a constructive and useful seminar. I will kindly ask Mr. Arsenia Tsunyuk, Prime Minister of Ukraine, to take the floor. with the Norwegian business and Norwegian companies. The key driver of Ukrainian economy for today, on the one hand, this is the driver, on the other hand, this is the challenge, is energy. And uh, we really appreciate the level of bilateral cooperation between state-owned company Naftogaz and Statoil, which is one of the world leaders in uh, delivering and supplying of energy products. The deal was signed uh, last month, and this deal is a clear sign of our commitment to new energy policy, of Ukrainian commitment uh, to implement the third energy package, and this is the perfect field for our joint cooperation. I want to underline separately that uh, one of the key projects uh, in Europe, which is the Baltic Pipe, could be of highest importance for Ukraine too. If you restart uh, this project and uh, if Norwegian companies together with our Polish friends will build up this uh, pipe which can deliver up to 8 billion cubic meters of natural gas, of Norwegian natural gas, 
Uh, Ukraine already signed an FTA with uh, our Norwegian partners, uh, and we definitely need to improve our cooperation. It's still underdeveloped, and the level of uh, mutual investments uh, could be much higher, and this is to be the task and the aim of our forum and of this first ever meeting between Ukrainian and Norwegian business. Uh, the second driver of uh, Ukrainian economy, and uh, we strongly consider that this could be a part of our joint cooperation too, is the agricultural sector. Uh, we are happy to see Norwegian business in the Ukrainian agricultural sector, and we are happy to have uh, new types of cooperation and new types of uh, business activity in this area too. Uh, let me uh, remind you just one very important thing on the gas transportation system and on our energy cooperation. Uh, Ukrainian government, together with the parliament, passed already a bill that allows uh, EU-based companies and US-based companies to invest into the modernization and, trans and uh, uh, operation of Ukrainian gas transmission system. If Norwegian companies in energy sector are ready to invest into Ukrainian gas transmission system, the government is ready to pass a special bill that will allow not only EU-based companies, but we, that will allow Norwegian companies to invest directly into Ukrainian gas transmission system and into Ukrainian storage facilities. Because the experience we already got uh, in cooperation with Statoil is uh, crucial and positive one. And we expect to have Norwegian companies uh, in their energy field as a partners and as an investors. Uh, let me start with good news. The good news is that uh, Ukrainian agricultural sector is the only positive one which showed uh, uh, up to 16% of, of up to 6% of uh, um, rice. Another good thing is that we improved our uh, ranking in doing business by 16 points. Uh, the third, more positive rather than negative news, is that we expected up to minus 10% of GDP decline. Probably it could be better, it could be up to minus 7%. The bad news is that uh, Russia that waged the war against Ukraine do not stick to Minsk obligations, do not stick to Minsk deal, and the ceasefire that we desperately tried to launch and to impose a number of times is always broken by Russian-led terrorists. The war is a key impediment in uh, making Ukrainian economy more stable, more flourishing and more attractive. Despite the fact that it's difficult to attract international investors having on Ukrainian soil already attracted in inverted commas Russian-led terrorists and Russian, Russian tanks, we, by this forum, we show that it's actually possible too. And uh, we are facing a number of challenges, we are facing a number of hurdles and problems, but uh, to change the economy, to improve the economy, and to deliver real changes to the Ukrainian society and to the Ukrainian people is the key priority for this government, and I strongly believe for the future government too. We are in a coalition talks, uh, Madam Prime Minister, you know what politics means. Well, this is not the best thing in the world to have, uh, uh, to hammer out the coalition deal, but we strongly believe that uh, we will ink the coalition deal as quick as possible, and the new government is to undertake an enormous effort in order to stabilize the economy, uh, to execute and to emit all OPC set by the IMF, the World Bank, and another international uh, financial institutions. Uh, the new government is to pass tough reforms. Uh, which we already launched six months ago, and the new government is to pave the way for the economic stability which we expect to be in the year 2016. So we have a very comprehensive agenda. Uh, we have uh, large scale and uh, big plans, but I want to indicate again that the key problem on this way is the war. And we edge ask 
kindly request the Western world to be united, to stay strong, and to act in concert and jointly against the Russian aggression. This is not just about Ukraine. This is about the global order and the international law that is brutally violated by the Russian Federation and Russian President. We have to do our best to stop this war, to have peace in Ukraine, and to have our nations flourishing, happy, stable, and not scared of war or any kind of another distortion. Madam Prime Minister, once again, thank you for your visit, and I kindly invite Norwegian business to invest into this big, good, and strong country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. And now I will give the floor to the Norwegian Prime Minister, Mrs. Anna Solberg. Prime Minister, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. This is the first ever visit to Ukraine by a Norwegian Prime Minister. I've come here to give Kiev support and to support choice made by the people of Ukraine to pursue a future built on the values of freedom, justice, and dignity. A choice for which so many of this country have sacrificed so much. And a choice that has been confirmed through two successful democratic elections this year. Ukrainian people have voted for change and for European integration. We all know that uh, achieving this will require major reforms and a great deal of work. Business cooperation plays a key role in generating economic growth and in integrating countries into the global economy and to promote common rules and standards. As business leaders, you now have the opportunity to lay the foundations for a prosperous Ukraine that can meet the aspirations of its people. It's up to us politicians to remove barriers and to create a framework that will allow business to develop and trade to prosper between our countries. Norway and Ukraine are both trading nations. I think our commercial ties go all the way back to the Viking Age. It might be a different way now, but it's, it's, a, long, it's a long history. But we now need to revitalize these uh, ties. Norway is already a very open economy. We are prosperous because we do business with other countries. And Ukraine is beginning to open its economy. In this process, we will share our experience and help your, uh, Ukraine adapt to the European market standards so that you can move towards the international market that has been so important for Norwegian prosperity. Business and trade corporations are an important element of our relations, and it, I hope it will become an even more important part of it. Today's Norwegian-Ukraine Business Forum, which brought together more than 200 representatives of different business, shows how much interest there is in strengthening existing business ties and creating new partnerships. And I believe there is a considerable potential for developing closer economic ties and diversified trade between our countries. Because we have to admit at present time, the trade between Norway and Ukraine is rather limited, with one important exception, seafood. Over the last decade, seafood products have accounted for approximately 85% of the total value of Norwegian exports to Ukraine. And I grew up by the sea, and I'm very fond of seafood. I know it's healthy and good. I'm looking, therefore, forward to opening a Norwegian seafood outlet here in Kiev later today. I hope that an increasing number of the people who live here will come to appreciate the taste and quality of Norwegian seafood. But our bilateral economic ties are not limited to seafood. 
There are roughly 35 Norwegian companies already operating in the Ukrainian market. The ET and the shipping building sectors are well established and show potential for new activity. In addition, new opportunities are opening up in the energy and agricultural sectors. And I think it's important to, uh, in the situation that Ukraine has today, I think it's important that we emphasize this new potential that we have, because there's always a need for economic growth to, to sustain the development of a country, even how tough the surroundings might be. I believe that predictable for framework condition, including transparency, the rule of law, are crucial for expanding business cooperation and trade. And I'm pleased to note that one of the parallel sessions of this forum here today will focus on trade facilitation. The 2012 free trade agreement between the EFTA countries and uh, Ukraine and the Ukraine V2 membership are important instruments to ensure predictability in trade and economic uh, cooperation. The, U the Ukrainian people made a choice for further European integration. It also means to become, become part of a wider market that includes Norway as a member of the European Economic Area. I am convinced that everyone will benefit from this. We will be taking a new step forward in our bilateral economic relations later today when we will sign an agreement between our governments on the establishing of a bilateral economic commission. The commission will be a permanent arena for discussing opportunities and challenges in our economic cooperation and seeking solutions to problems. A memorandum of understanding between the Norwegian Accreditation and National Accreditation Agency of Ukraine will also be signed today. I see this as an important step towards Ukraine's adaption to European standard. Even though Norway is not a member of the EU, we feel that we are a member of a European family. It is in Norway's interest to build a successful and a mutually beneficial partnership with Ukraine. And I think today's seminar is a contribute, will contribute to this. And I would like to take the, thank the organizers, the Norwegian Ukraine Chamber of Commerce, its counterpart at the International Chamber of Commerce Ukraine, for organizing this business forum, making it possible for businesses in both countries to meet each other, find new partnerships, and to know more about each other. I wish you all a successful and inspiring seminar. I will use more of my day to meet official representatives from the Ukrainian government. I'll see you later at the reception. But I would like to say Ukraine has been in the hearts of most Norwegians the last year. We've seen what's happening on the Manan. We have seen uh, the situation and the uh, illegal annexation of uh, the Crimea the fighting in the eastern, Russia, uh, eastern, uh, eastern part of Ukraine with participation of Russia. We know that there is a, this is a people that has been in a tough circumstances, hard struggle. But I hope that seminars like this also shows that there is a way forward, that it's not just about the political disputes, the uh, war acts against Ukraine, but it's also about bringing more hope and a new development to Ukraine. Thank you. We know that you have other important meetings today, and therefore you need to leave now. So I think we all should applaud, give them a large applause for this, uh, this, uh, for joining us today. Okay. Then we continue the business forum. Uh, the next item on the agenda. Uh, is a signing ceremony of uh, three agreements and memorial of understanding. Um, for each agreement, I will read the main content and ask the partners to step forward uh, and sign the agreement. Yeah. The first uh, agreement is a signing of a protocol on the initiative of Seed Forum. We shall now sign a cooperation protocol between high-level representatives of partners in Ukraine uh, and Norway for cooperation on implementation of e-government solution from Norway 
to Ukraine. We kindly ask all the representatives to sign the protocol to come forward to the front left side of the stage as fast as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call to the floor uh, Mr. Morten Detman, an expert on communications strategy. Next, retired Major General, expert on cyber defense, Mr. Ruhr Funkel. <laughs> Mr. Edward Pedersen, expert on e-government. Mr. Anders Stolen, expert on public procurement. <laughs> Mr. Rando Parna, head of C4 Estonia. Mr. Dmitro Markov, Parliament of Ukraine. <laughs> Mr. Mikola Velichkovich, Minister of Interior. Mr. Petro Mehed, Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. <laughs> Mr. Viktor Yagun, Security Service of Ukraine. <laughs> Mr. Anatoly Mazaraki, Rector of the State University for Trade and Economy. Mr. Maxim Polikov, National Commission for State Regulation of Financial Services of Ukraine. <laughs> Mr. Uh, quite a few names. Anatoly Makarenko, State Fiscal Service of Ukraine. National Security and Defense Council. And Steiner Cosmo, Chairman and CEO of Seedform Global. Mr. Dmitry Podolev, Chairman of Seedform Ukraine. And maybe just before me, Ambassador Fredrickson, if you have a chance. And of course, I will sign naturally. Thank you very much, Fanny. I will use this opportunity to um, thank for the opportunity to sign this uh, cooperation protocol on the very important implementation of e-government solutions from Norway to Ukraine during the Norwegian-Ukrainian business seminar this morning. Thank you as well to all the partners, both on the Ukrainian and Norwegian side, for taking part in this, which we think will be a future um, 
great cooperation between Norway and Ukraine, which will give soon effect in the inter-bilateral cooperation between our two countries. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That was a very effective signing process. Uh, let's uh, go to the second agreement. Um, that's signing of the grant letter for innovation in interdisciplinary teams and good uh, governance across borders. The project is initiated by Levy Business School and Ukrainian Catholic University in partnership with Inuko and the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Please. Uh, on behalf of Lviv Business School and Ukrainian Catholic University, I would like to express appreciation to the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs for supporting this initiative. Uh, we hope that our cooperation and uh, the project which we have in mind together uh, with Norwegian partners will help to support in this country good governance and innovation. And both things we can definitely learn very well from Norway and we definitely need to improve in Ukraine. So we are looking forward very much to this project. Thank you very much, uh, Sofia Upatska. Uh, my name is Katinka Kolsaki, and on behalf of the Norwegian uh, University of Science and Technology and INACO, I'm most grateful for the support from the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs for this uh, unique opportunity to work with your dedicated team, Sofia, at uh, Lviv Business School and at the Ukrainian Catholic University and to bring even more innovation into your education. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, last but not least, we have a memorable understanding between the national accreditation bodies of Ukraine and Norway in order to promote the cooperation between the two organizations regarding development of accreditation activities. So please. Thank you very much. I would also like to uh, take this opportunity to say thank you for uh, making it possible for us to sign this MOU here. We already cooperate very, I would say, closely within our European network, but this, I'm confident, will bring our two organizations even closer. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to speak English, but I'm not going to speak English, but what my colleague said, Я теж підтримую. Дуже дякую норвезькій стороні, що дала можливість наблизитися ще ближче до Європи. Ми, коли були проводили вас засідання Генеральної асамблеї, відчули ту теплоту, хоч за полярним кругом, але теплоту людських сердець. Надіємося на тісну співпрацю. Дякую. I would, I would like to give the floor Mr. Dmitry Shimkiv, Deputy Head of Administ Presidential Administration of Ukraine. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Excellencies, uh, very happy to see you here on the Ukrainian-Norwegian Forum. 
which is extremely important. It's great to see the process of signing so many agreements, which re-entering the phase of big cooperation that will spur from the relationship uh, between Ukraine and Norway. Back in 10th century, uh, the friendship between Norway and Ukraine has been extremely strong. There was a friendship and long relationship between royalties. The Norwegian king spent summer, I would say summer holidays in this way, um, in Kiev. Um, there was a military support, there was support to reinstate the Norwegian kings, there was a, a ruling of Ukrainian queen in Norway for 20 years. And then it slowly died, because as Ukraine has to face a challenging situation in its history, Norway faced a similar thing. But then it came back with the famous uh, explorer Fritjof Nansen and the Prime Minister mentioned today agribusiness and agriculture businesses where Fritjof Nansen spent a lot of investments and r raising money to support Ukraine after artificial famine uh, that was created by Soviet Union. And a lot of these facts of cooperation is not well known. My relationship personal with Norway started back when I started business in ICT. And it's great honor to see here a list of the people, of the companies, who is sponsoring this event, and the majority of them are coming from ICT, Information and Communication Technologies. Teleno was one of the first telecom operator coming here. One of the first seed funds who support Ukrainian innovations with funding, which is no obligation to Ukrainian startups was again coming from Norway. Norway presented and showed a lot of innovation and a lot of creativity how to come and work in this market. Scandinavia represents an absolutely different approach uh, to building sustainable economy, sustainable business environment, sustainable political and human relationship. And I think this is something that we have to learn from Norway and build our strong cooperation and building absolutely new business. I would like to give a very short glimpse of all of you where, when we're talking about the transformation that Ukraine is going through. For years, it's, Ukraine has been struggling with the transformation, and it's true, some of the reforms in the economy transformation were not taking place as they should be. That's when, when the new government and the president came after the revolution of dignity and the freedom for war, war for freedom, we see, uh, we started with a, the work from the strategic view. We developed a strategy 2020, which identifies the key priorities for the country to qualify for the membership in the European Union by 2020. Uh, with defining a very, very clear set of 25 KPIs. We leverage actually the knowledge that uh, exists in the European Union for that. Now we are working jointly with the Cabinet of Ministers on developing the recovery plan 2015-2017. It's a very detailed plan identifying a set of actions for the three years. Ukraine never planned for three years. This is one of the first plans which is encouraged by European Union and our donor and donors to Ukraine. Uh, and there is, a, again, the working group consists of the Cabinet of Ministers, Presidential Administration, European Union. It's a joint work that will be developed. It's a set of actions, a set of results, a set of KPIs, a set of very clear definitions what, which compress a comprehensive plan for the recovery of the country. And then we are going to very tactical things, which is which again Prime Minister mentioned today, it's a coalition agreement. And the way how coalition agreements are structured is structured against a very clear set of activities that needs to be done in terms of reforms. All the reforms are structured, when we talk about the priority of reforms, they are structured around the several key areas, which I would like to mention. The first one, which is important for this business forum, is, is the rule of law. The rule of law is paramount for the transformation of Ukraine. It's anti-corruption, it's a court reform, it's a reform of criminal justice. These three reforms are critical for instating the rule of law for the country, and which is extremely critical for any investments to come in. The second critical element for support investment in Ukraine is deregulation. Economic deregulation, removing the obstacles. And it's interesting 
because I've been looking through the ease of doing business for Norway, and Norway been significantly improving and improving uh, their position in you know, ease of doing business exactly in the area of deregulation. So looking forward for uh, some learning and experience in that uh, direction. And then when we look at the third area of transformation, and a lot of things that have been signed today relates to this. It's changing the governance model for the country. The governance model com not only com com consists of the how civil servants work and what type of civil servants we have in, U in Ukrainian government or uh, in Ukraine, but it's also decentralization. It's the way how we structure governance and empower the regional and local governments with decision making. It's interesting that the Prime Minister of Norway, one of the area of interest is exactly decentralization. So we're again looking forward for the experience in this area, how we can cooperate and learn, uh, because again, I have a lot of friends living in Norway and I know how decentralization and empowerment in different regions uh, in Norway works, really works. The decision power, the investment capacity, especially when we talk about um, uh, winter times, particularly. We have to learn how to transform our healthcare. There was a very little mentioned about the healthcare here today, but one of the biggest hospitals in Norway and in Europe is the Trondheim Hospital. I had an honor to work on that project from ICT perspective, so I've seen how it works and I've seen how big it is. And so I would like to say that there's a lot of things we can learn, particularly leveraging innovation technology, which is implemented there for many years, and re rebuilding the healthcare system in Ukraine. A lot of this area will be united by ICT e-government, because e-government is an element instrument that for a long time in Ukraine was not leveraged, and at the same time when we look at the quantity of Norwegian companies that are leaders worldwide on ICT, innovations, technology, how many acquisition, how, much, how many patents and innovations come from Norway, particularly in data, data management and in insights. This is something that we're definitely looking forward for cooperation. So this forum today sets a strong foundation for the future development of bilateral agreement and bilateral relationship. I'm looking forward to welcome a lot of Norwegian companies. Um, you're strong, you're Vikings, you're, you can really make a big difference here uh, the same way that your ancestors did for many years ago. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Dear friends, I would like to give the floor Mr. Arnim Mjot. Okay, um, I look at the schedule, so we are just ahead of schedule. That's good. Uh, I think we, should, we have reached the end of the plenary session one, part one, and the next item is actually a coffee break and the mingling. So I think I will leave you a little sooner, but first there are some very important messages for all of you. Um, the parallel on ICT uh, will be in this ballroom, this room, and it starts at 11.30. Uh, the parallel on energy is in London 1, downstairs, and that starts at 11.15. So start 50 minutes earlier than the schedule in the program. Remember that. Uh, the parallel on competence will be in room London 2 downstairs and starts at 11.30. The parallel on trade facilitation will be at the Hotel Intercontinental just over the street. Coffee will be served there, so please follow Eivind Setren. You see her? Yeah, he is there. So he will guide you there. Uh, yeah. And uh, finally, but not least, we ask all the representatives to, to attend the uh, Seed Forum, Forum, Seed Forum Kiev in IHUB to go out in the bus parked outside the Hyatt Hotel as fast as possible. The bus is leaving in just some minutes. Uh, after the parallel session, we return back to this uh, plenary session part two that will take place in this ballroom uh, and we start precisely 15.30. Enjoy your parallel sessions.